Well, welcome back to the Undervalued Investor YouTube channel, where today we're recapping 2023 on the S&P 500 heat map. And then we're going to take a look at three stocks that I think are going to be the most fascinating to watch in 2024. If that is a conversation you need to appreciate, as always, hit that like button because 2023 was the year of tech. They had the most resilient balance sheets and were the most unaffected by the interest raise environment. But as we head into 2024, it's very likely as interest rate cuts start coming into conversation that the bottom half the market is likely to begin to see a full recovery. We're already starting to see a sell-off into the beginning of the year as we take a look at the one-week performance. It's very intriguing to see tech take the biggest hit so far, but is expected after the incredible run we had through last year. But taking a look, some of the most hit stocks of last year, including Pfizer, are starting to be the biggest runners of 2024. The healthcare sector definitely getting the biggest bump so far, but we are only a few trading days into the beginning of the year, so it'll be very intriguing to see where we go. But the stocks that I want to focus most on are going to continue to be tech because they have the most resilient balance sheets and they are the most, you know, growth um, objective stocks people are paying attention to. So we're going to be taking a look at Apple, Amazon, and NVIDIA. And I'm going to break down each one of these and explain to you why I think they are the most intriguing to pay most attention to. Now we're going to start with first and foremost, NVIDIA. The AI revolution has been the conversation of choice through 2023, and I think it's going to continue to be one of the most fascinating discussions in 2024 because of the growth rates that NVIDIA was able to achieve through the AI and cloud computing you know, ramp up. We can see that a, basically, NVIDIA has the highest margins of any S&P top 10 company at a whopping gross margin of 74%, meaning for every $100 they bring in, they're maintaining about $74, which is absolutely in insane, right? Their net income went up 1,259% year over year, 50% quarter over quarter to $9.2 billion. This growth rate is largely unsustainable over a long period of time, but if they can keep this growth rate up even for the next three quarters, it is very likely they could be making more net income than the likes of Apple. That's why there's going to be a lot of discussion around this company as Apple's net income, as we will see, is sitting, I believe, around $23 billion. But there ain't no company bringing in growth rates and having margins that are this damn high. Thanks to the H100s, their cloud computing, all of that costing tens of thousands of dollars. These are not software. This is not hardware that is meant for me or you. It is meant for big business. They are selling business to business with Amazon, Tesla being some of their like largest customers, right? So taking a look at Amazon here, the e-commerce realm has not fully saturated the market yet. Even in this recessionary environment, consumer spending continues to shift to the realm of online. And we see that in Amazon's net product sales for the entire year going from, well, we'll take a look. Net product sales went from $172 billion to $179 billion for the nine month. We have not got Q4 numbers yet. And uh, total service sales went from $192 billion to $225, meaning total growth $364 billion to $404 damn billion, uh, which is absolutely jaw-dropping numbers. I mean, talking about a company here making $404 billion um, it's just something you couldn't have imagined, I think, even 10 years ago. These are staggering, staggering numbers. And unlike many of the big tech companies, if we scroll down and we just take a look at their assets, I mean, Amazon's got one of the best balance sheets, even above Apple, with $462 billion in assets and basically only $155 billion in total current liabilities. A very, very resilient balance sheet um, and a lot of cash. I mean, they've got damn near, you know, $53 billion dollars in cash, which is pretty amazing in and of itself. But comparing it all to Apple, the reason that I, I mentioned NVIDIA is for the AI, revolu uh, AI revolution. The reason that I mentioned uh, Amazon is for the continued growth in e-commerce, which is outpacing a lot of other markets right now continually and really proving that brick and mortar continues to die. And we haven't reached pure saturation on online shopping yet. And Apple, because Apple right now is in one of the worst eras that it has experienced in well over a decade. They have an extreme lack of innovation. A lot of people will say, well, VR is innovation for them, but their VR product, I think, is so disconnected from the end user that they're not going to see huge sales. It's more for developers than it is users at over $3,000 US dollar price target, whereas Meta's 
Uh, you know, Quest 3 is coming in at six around the $600 price. Market's much more user-friendly and an incredible device. So it'll be neat to see how Apple sustains into 2024 when for the first time ever, they're seeing a slowdown in iPhone sales, um, which comes as a bit of a shock. I mean, again, take a look at from uh, Q, uh, the 9 or 12 month ending, um, September, 2024, 2022 to September 30th, 2023. And we can see almost every product category is losing billions of dollars outside of their services business. Uh, which has grown from 78 billion to 85 billion, just like many, you know, cloud service businesses when it comes to Amazon's AWS, Microsoft, that's one of the largest uh, growth sectors, but even Apple isn't seeing the, the most extensive growth is even some of these other large cap companies in that sector. So it's only just balancing out the losses that they are experiencing in revenue from all these other product categories. Now, I think long-term Apple will be a continued success. It is basically a staple. It is the, like, it's basically the, the general electric of the future. I mean, these products aren't going anywhere. They're pretty undisruptable, probably for the next 20 or 30 years. Let's be real. But this thing is going to continue to generate huge amounts of cash, even though the revenue is declining a bit. I just think the era of growth for Apple is going to be in question for 2024 and something a lot of investors are going to be hyper fixated on considering their assets sit at 352 billion but they are really debted at 290 billion in total liabilities and about 145 billion in current liabilities their balance sheet isn't as resilient or as resilient as it once was even when you're comparing it to the balance sheet of Amazon or companies like Google and Nvidia so I think Apple's going to be one to watch for sure so these are the stocks that I think are most intriguing for 2024 and it's very incredible to see what sectors are going to outpace in 2024 and I think the lower half of the market will continue to be a story as interest rate cuts come into play because a lot of these under, you know, the, the bottom half, of the S&P 500 are affected by the interest rates on their balance sheet when it comes to the debt that they have. They're not as, um, you know, malleable as these large cap companies that have much better balance sheets. So I think there's going to be a lot more intriguing plays in the lower half of the market, um, but only time will truly tell. And I'd love to know what you think about that in the comment section below.